Ready for the Word? I love preaching the Word of God to people of righteousness, people whose hearts are open. And uh, because the, the Word says, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you a free person. And I want to preach again today on this theme. This is the second week into a little series on hearing from God. Hearing from God. This one is hearing from God to fulfill our calling. Last week we spoke on hearing the promptings or the ping of the Holy Spirit. And we'll continue on with that because we want to be a Spirit-led people. And uh, we need that to fulfill our calling in life. So I want to take you to 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1 to 5. This is now uh, teaching us on how we fulfill our calling as a church of people together. And it says this, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1, Pursue love above everything else. Love is the greatest. Pursue love, but it doesn't stop there. It says, and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies does three things. He speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. We'll talk on that in a moment. But he who speaks in a tongue edifies, builds himself up. But he who prophesies builds up the church, the body of people. I, I wish that you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues. Unless indeed that person seeks God to interpret the tongue that the church may receive edification together. I, I love all this stuff on teaching in the Holy Spirit. And I'm doing it because we're planning a new church on the Sunshine Coast. And many people are coming from many different backgrounds with all of their divergent philosophies, education, spiritual understanding, whatever. And I'm doing it as much to share with our new church. We are Pentecostal. We believe in the work of the Holy Spirit. And we want a church filled with people that live and move and have their being and function in and by the Holy Spirit. That's the only hope of the future to me. And so here, Paul is teaching a little on how to function in the unction. And he talks about prophesying and about speaking in tongues or a tongue, bringing a message in an unknown tongue. And I just want to, and this is not my message, but I'm just getting off track. As a Pentecostal, and I believe the Bible endorses and, and uh, strengthens this view. As a Pentecostal, the Holy Spirit did not leave the church and the gifts of the Spirit by about the third century or any time, and they all ceased. That's a nonsense. There's plenty of proof that the gifts of the Spirit and speaking in tongues and everything else happened throughout history, even in the dark ages, and then was restored again in uh, these latter days in power with a Pentecostal outpouring that swept the world and brought the church alive again. But there is a difference between the evidence of speaking in tongues, which is when you receive the Holy Spirit, you overflow with the Spirit. It goes beyond your reason and understanding and you allow, create sounds that are the vehicle for the Holy Spirit to flow. You didn't learn them. You can't understand them. They're spiritual. And so that's the evidence for every believer that receives the fullness of the Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit. But then there is the gift of tongues in the nine gifts of the Spirit. And uh, tongues, interpretation and prophecy are the three vocals. And, and uh, Paul says, you've got this prayer language that builds you up as a believer and you speak mysteries to God and you pray in the Spirit. But when you come to church, 
and you bring a message in tongues, it's useless. It may be a sign of the supernatural to the unbeliever, but it's use, useless to the church unless you believe and receive uh, the enabling to interpret that for the body. But it, beyond that, when you come together, it's better to prophesy and speak a word by the Spirit that brings edification and builds the church up. So that's the distinction we have here. And uh, I want to focus on this today. The Spirit of God, hearing from God so that we can be a blessing and fulfill our calling. And here it clearly says, pursue love, but do it to be a blessing by the spiritual gifts. Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, and especially above all, the gift of prophecy in your life, which is declaring the plan of Jesus for people's lives by the Spirit. And uh, so it says here, if you want to move and listen to the Holy Spirit, there are three things that you have to know clearly the function and move that the Spirit is for. It's for edification. You do anything by the Spirit, it's to edify, edify people. Edification is to build up. I want to build people up in love, but by the Spirit's prompting, the ping of the Holy Spirit. Share a word with them. In love, I do it to build them up. Edification. Second one is exhortation. Edification is to build up. E e exhortation is to rev up. Give them a rev up, not in a bad way, but inspire them to greater works. Exhortation, come on, you can do it. You can rise, you can take that step of faith. The Word of the Lord is this, to rev you up. A lot of the prophetic words fit into that basis there. They're exhorting people to have a go. Do something great for God, and I love that. I would that people understood the parameters of you moving in the Spirit in our church. Edification. In love, build people up. By the Spirit, exhort people to rev them up, give them greater faith. And then the third one is comfort. Build them up, rev them up, comfort, lift them up. You bring a word that lifts them up when they're down, when they need a hand. And it's not just coming, hey, and the word of the Lord is, no, no, sometimes the Spirit of God prompts you to lift them up, give them a meal, take them out, talk them Talk them out of depression and hopelessness. That's, a, that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit flowing through you to lift people up in times of downcast, despondency and discouragement. And so those three things, God says that should be normal in a church and you've got the, the, the rule of love, but then you've got the anointing of the Spirit in the vocals, tongues and interpretation go together. And there's a place for that. As, as the church gets bigger, it's, it's, you can't do it from the floor because it would be chaos. And so what happens is we move it down to the hub of life in any larger church, and that is the small group, where the life and the reality of how we live together happens. And there, it can well be a great source of blessing. If you bring a tongue, have faith to interpret it but far better than that when you're together is to bring the prophetic edge word in the name of Jesus. Now, if you want this stuff to work in church, and, and so many churches leave it alone because, you know, every, they're genuine people. They just, they don't listen. And uh, so many churches back away from the life in the Spirit, the moving of the Spirit. And that's so sad because that's where God shines great as the Spirit of God leads us and moves. But one of the reasons is that people don't know their parameters. And the parameters are edification, exhortation, and comfort. You can do that with your friends, with anybody by the Spirit. But there's two areas you can't do. You can't do it. And so many people want to do these two areas uh, and it just spoils everything. And they are, these two areas by the, in the Spirit are direction and discipline. The Bible says, leave that 
to mature leadership that are trusted in your world. Direction and discipline. I'm amazed how many Christians run to half-bake nobodies and give me a word of direction. You don't even know that person. I, I'm amazed. I have all my life because God's put His anointing on my life and I am in wonder of that. But so many people want to out-prophesy the prophet. They just think that shows their grandiose standing or something. But so many people come to me, I've never met them before, and they say, God's given me a word for you. It's about your direction. Right there, I switch off. I don't know you, and uh, I'm not about to trust your word. I've had prophets lay hands on me and say, God's going to move you to New Zealand some years ago, and uh, you need to start packing your bags now. And I just uh, went home or talked to Marion after and said, that's not a word from God. That's their intention for me to become a part of their group and they want to position me there where they want to position me. I don't accept that. I go to trusted leaders when it comes to direction and so should you. It's not that a leader has to tell you where to go. Sometimes I like to. But it's that a leader will confirm what the Holy Spirit's putting in your heart about your direction, your purpose in life. And so the second one is discipline. The Lord's disciplining you. And I've heard some awful, awful supposed uh, utterances of prophetic utterance about people. You, the Lord's breath, you know, and they point at people and bring them into judgment and discipline. That's, that's not their right to do that. That's not godly. And so these two areas, leave them alone and God will use you in the things of the Spirit for edification, build people up. Ed exhortation, inspire and rev them up and comfort, lift them up when they're down and need help from the Lord. Now, this prophetic thing, above all that you would learn to prophesy and be prophetic, is for all God's people. I love that passage in the Old Testament in Numbers 11, 28, 29. And uh, Joshua, the apprentice uh, to Moses, he was his assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid those other guys to prophesy. They were outside the camp prophesying. They'd heard that Moses and the elders were prophesying. They said, we're going to have a go. And Moses said to Joshua, are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put His Spirit upon them. This whole deal, the changing of the world is not by one or two good men. It's by the church coming alive in the Spirit, knowing that you're called to carry a prophetic edge. And so I want to talk to you very simply for a little while on how do you develop a prophetic edge in your life? This is how I've tried to do it, to keep sharp and listen to God. The first thing is you've got to make a choice and understand it is a flow, not a feeling. Too many people when it comes to the Spirit want a <laughs> feeling. Zap me again. No, no. The moving of the Spirit is a flow, not a feeling. Holy Spirit does not speak to your soul. Your soul is your understanding, your intellect, reason, and your emotions. And so many people come for a touch. That's the evangelist domain. God bless them. They love to zap people. Feel it. No, I want to change people and thank God for every expression, but I'm talking about you flowing. It's a flow, not a feeling. That changed my life when I understood that the Spirit of the Lord is within me, in my spirit. And I make a choice for Him to flow, whether I'm as cold, you know, I've been working all day, you know, whatever, distracted with all the nuances of life 
If He lives within me and He wants to flow, I make a choice to activate that. And it's not a feeling, it's not an emotion. It's a flow that I have the choice to allow the Holy Spirit to flow. Secondly, probably the greatest thing in my life is to pray in the Spirit. As I said, every believer that's filled, baptized in the Holy Spirit has this prayer language, these unusual sounds, tongues we've never learned. And uh, so every morning, every day, in the car, wherever I am, I pray in tongues. Why? Because I want to kickstart and get the flow of the Holy Spirit happening in my life. And I want to sensitize my heart to the ping, the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And so I speak in tongues a lot in my prayer time. And while I'm doing that, I'm listening for the ping of the Holy Spirit. It's a flow. It's not a feeling. I'm half asleep some mornings, had long days, whatever. But I pray in tongues and I listen for the ping of the voice of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it doesn't happen every morning like that. I go out and I think, wow, I didn't feel much today. I get in my car and drive and I meet someone that I wasn't expecting to meet and ping. How did that happen? It happened because I prepared my spirit. I spoke in tongues. I edified myself in faith. So that when the ping came, I knew that God was ready. I'd prepared my heart. Then uh, every time God pings or gives me a little prompting, the next thing I do is ask for wisdom. God, how do I say this? He may show me some stuff. I shared recently in our uh, miracles uh, message. I shared about being in a place and God said, there's a man here with a leg condition. And I called him out. I said, there's a man here. You've got a leg condition. We need to pray. And as he began to walk up, God said, there's something about this man and his daughter. Something's wrong. And I thought, God, please, what do I say? And so that's when I'm asking for wisdom. Because half the time you blow it, not by what God says, but by, by what you say. And so I, he comes out the front and I pray for him. I said, have you got a daughter? And he said, yes, she's a teenager. Where is she? She's home. Didn't want to come to church. I said, I need to pray for your daughter. Something's going wrong. And I just, we did. We prayed, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and uh, asked for God to do a miracle, bring her to, a, to the Lord in a great way. And so the next night, uh, the, the, the parents are coming to the meeting. We had a number of meetings. And they're coming to the meeting. They, five minutes from their house, they, the Holy Spirit speaks to them some way. And they say, we're just concerned about our daughter. We need to go home and talk to her. So they turned around, went back home and got there just as uh, in time to find a, a man breaking into the back of the house into the daughter's bedroom with obviously evil intent. And so they were able to put him to flight and police uh, followed that up, etc. And the daughter, of course, then was much softer and open to talk about the will of God for her life. Out of that one ping, got a sore leg. I'm going to pray for you. He, he's in trouble with his daughter. That's when you need wisdom. It wasn't what I thought, oh God, what is this? Uh, so don't say more than God tells you to say and you'll be on good ground. Well, I'm going to pray for your daughter. There's an issue there. And of course, out of that, God delivered her from a very awful situation and uh, softened her heart to turn to the Lord again. So ask for wisdom, how to speak. And the Holy Spirit will give you revelation, etc. The next thing you have to do if you want to move in this prophetic edge on your life, I pray all of your will. Spirit of the Lord, rest on you and be in you. You've got to act in faith without doubting. This is the, 
This guy comes up and he's halfway up and he's, and he's the guy with a sore leg. That's easy. Pray for a sore leg. He's got an issue with his daughter. I have to pursue that. I've got to act on that in faith because it's a prompting, a ping of the Holy Spirit. I ask for wisdom and so I do it in a way that's obviously not beyond the brief of the Holy Spirit. Something, there's an issue with your daughter, we're going to pray into your family, etc. And But I had to step out and address that by the Holy Spirit. And God gave us the vi victory, obviously. And he flowed into that situation and brought about a great testimony in the house of God. Now, this Holy Ghost thing for the, for the New Testament church, it's all about you and I getting our act together. You and I getting our act together. And I want to quickly just touch on this. In, a, uh, in Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 16, listen to this. I'll be brief on this. And Jesus, as He ascended, He gave gifts to His church. He gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. That's the hand of God on planet Earth. And the hand of God is the fivefold ascension gifts that Jesus has given to His church to equip the saints. These ascension gifts are to equip you and I, the saints, to do two things in church and out of church. It says, number one, ascension gifts equip the saints, you and I, for the work of the ministry and the edifying building up of the body of Christ. The work of the ministry is carrying the Holy Spirit to your world and ministering God's grace to the broken hurting. The edifying of the body is being planted in a church and serving to build the house. People say, I'll never, I'll never follow a man. You know, leadership in the church has gone stupid. Well, the truth is in some places, God's shaking that and dealing with it. But the truth is also humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And right here on planet Earth, the hand of God are the five-fold ministry gifts. Humble yourself to be shaped, equipped, and made effective for God to do the work of the ministry. This church, Epic Church, will never be a performance house. It'll be about you rising up, getting your act together and being shaped for the work of the ministry and the edifying of the body. I want you to do more than just be a deacon, a, a coffee server, a small group leader. I want you, that's edifying the body. That's being together in one place and with one purpose. But I want you also to learn how to do the work of the ministry, the spirit flow the life of the Holy Ghost. And, and it says, if we'll do that, we will all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. All of a sudden, the church will start to shine to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Listen to this, it goes on. If we'll live like that, we will no longer be babies. Hope that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every fancy preacher and wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. He's waxing eloquent here, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things into Him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body, according to the effective working by which every part does its share and it causes the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Whoa! Some of these passages are so profound, we just glibly read them and say, oh, that's wonderful. But the reality is we're a church of broken people. No, no, I want a church. I don't want a big church filled with little people. I don't care what size of the church is. I want a church filled with big spirit people. 
people that say, I'm going to grow up and move in this stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to be a part of the answer. I'm going to carry the blessing of the Lord that's on me and I'm going to minister by the Spirit to others wherever I am led in Jesus' name. And I just know that God's got a great plan for your life, listening to the Holy Spirit, hearing from God to be a blessing, to fulfill your calling. Church is far more than an hour or two on a Sunday. Church is where we grow together under the full and perfect stature of Jesus Christ, the head of His body. Oh, I want you to shine. I want you to be a part of something magnificent. I commend you for those that are planted in the house and performing by the Spirit in your life, wherever you work and you have your life during the day or whenever. I I just bless you. There is hope for our nation. There's hope for our city where a church gets their act together and we start to listen to the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? Uh, God's for you, not against you. He loves you. He wants His best in you and to flow through you. Father, today, I thank you for every person that listens to the sound of my voice as I share the things that you've put on my heart. Let your blessing flow into every life. Let there be a stirring. Let the getting our act together challenge, be real in our lives. And may may we pursue intimacy with the Holy Spirit, that we would above all have a prophetic edge that does the work of the ministry and edifies the body in which we're a member planted together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're with us today and your life's not right with God, it's, it's right on time to make a change. All you have to do is say yes to Jesus. I need your help. You're a saviour, not just a psychologist, not just a you know good principles guru. You're the saviour of all who call upon your name. And Lord Jesus, I want you to save me from my sinfulness, from my backsliding, from my irrelevance and self-seeking, save me, wash me with your blood, forgive me of my sinfulness and my selfishness that I I can live for you and live this spirit-led life and be a blessing to many. Simply say yes to Jesus right now, come into my heart, forgive me, cleanse me, wash me with your blood, fill me with your Holy Spirit and I will live for you from this moment on. How cool is that? And if you have, get in touch with us. We want to talk to you, help you on your journey wherever you are in the nations. Hey church, until next week, God bless you, keep you. May His Spirit rest upon you and flow through you that you might be a blessing in your world in Jesus' name. Amen.